making a living like uh, from Jiu Jitsu, it's pretty cool. But the whole thing, like you know, it's such a, like a stress relief that Jiu Jitsu is. That I think that's my Jiu Jitsu lifestyle. You know, like I feel like sometimes I'm stressed out, like about like you know something else, paying bills and all those crazy things. And uh, I come to the gym, like I get my 10 minutes round. You know, like I do like my 30 minutes rolling. And I just forget about everything else. And it, so I think that's the main thing that Jiu Jitsu brings to me, you know. Again, like I said, like it's not about the money, but it's about like, you know, the whole thing that the benefits that it brings you, like, you know, your health, like, you know, it's it's something like that's different. It is important in my life, you know. Like I said, I could be something else. I could be even like a lawyer, a doctor, whatever. Uh, I don't know if it would be, you know, I would have this that kind of like natural, like stress relief, like, you know, that I have in Jiu Jitsu. That's my job, but at the same time, it's like something that I, I do for fun, you know. So it's not just for the money, it's for the fun of it. I can, probably can do this until like I'm like 60 years old and you still have fun with it, so. My first experience in Jiu Jitsu was in 1998. I was like 13 years old, about to turn like 14. Um, my first instructor was uh, Jair Reis, like in Brazil, like in Rio. He had like a, like a small academy, like in, Ola, like in uh, Olaria, which is like a little small town, like in, in Rio. Um, this guy was a really good like Jiu Jitsu instructor for kids. And you know, since I was a kid at that time, was uh, he was doing a really good job with me. But I felt like I was just getting good, like faster Jiu Jitsu, and I always start to like you know not having too much of a competition in training, that's when I decided to move to the Grace Academy. And I made a transition, I think it was in the uh, end of 1999. So I just stayed a year in the first my first gym. And then uh, since then I stayed at the Grace Academy, that's where I got my black belt. I was even like starting like uh, trying to get my degree in Brazil, but I had to stop like since I moved into the States like too early, so but I was going to the, doing physical education school in Brazil. So like, you know, but then, you know, moved here, I had to quit everything just to focus like in Jiu Jitsu. It might've been a bad move or not. <laughs> I, I see like, you know, Jiu Jitsu for people that have talent, it becomes like, you know, the easy way. I mean, almost like the easy way out everything, but not really, but kind of, you know, because you're just using your body, you're using your talent to, to, to make a living. For me, it wasn't even the case. I had options, you know. It's not like I came from like rich families, and that was not the case. But I just, I was always a guy who was always in school. Like, and I never thought about just being the the, the sport guy, sportman guy. I, I wanted to be like, you know, I want to go to school, I want to get a degree and everything. But uh, since I started Jiu Jitsu, and I started to do like really well in Jiu Jitsu. I believe that I could make a living, you know, off the sport. So you know, it was almost like as early as I start to compete. So it wasn't such a thing as like, oh, I'm like 20 years old now. I have to start to make money. It wasn't the case. It was literally as I started to start to compete and I got good results. I felt like I could get like, you know, turning that into like uh, money and make a living off of it. It was more about like, you know, testing, like, I, I was just like, I, I was always about like, judge myself, you know, like, and when I got in the gym, Jiu Jitsu, of course, I didn't know anything at all. And uh, my first like, two months, I was already like, doing well against guys that were training for like, you know, a year. And after I got my orange belt, I was already like, you know, beating the other orange belts that were there at the gym for like, you know, two, three years. So I felt like I was, I was always catching up and like, you know, getting better than the guys that should be better than me. And then uh, that was when I was a kid. And once I got my blue belt, I went to the Grace Academy and I went against one of the orange belts there. And uh, then I ended up getting beat up by an orange belt from the Grace Academy. And I was like, well, I might have reached a like, good level like in the small gyms, but uh, not at the, you know, the highest level. And then eventually the orange belt that beat me like, you know, when I first joined the Grace Academy was, became like a type of like an easy training for me. So I felt like, you know, I was just progressing too fast. So I just, I had talent for it. And I think that's what kind of motivated me to make a living off of it. Was I just thought like, you know, if I'm progressing in the gym, I'm getting the results else in the tournament, so why not to try, you know?
that is something that happened to me too. Like I used to be really shy, and then it becomes to the point where, like, well, now you have to teach class, you have to deal with people. Not just that, you're gonna have to do that, like speaking another language. So I became way more vocal, you know. I became like a guy who was like, I can live like you know in big group and they still like you know try to talk, like be like really like vocal about things. So Jitsu also helped me with that, you know, the whole like teaching class. It's like, oh, of course, like I had that, that experience like an adult fighter who helped me even more with that. But like I think Jitsu was the start of like everything. Uh, I'm like. I was 100% like shy about anything, you know. I would go like to parties, just like stay by myself. I wouldn't talk to anybody unless it was a super close friend. Uh, even talking to girls, man, like when I was young, was it was tough because like you know I would be like really shy, like I didn't know how to get on somebody. And uh, this whole thing of like you know, you see like the environment how it is in the Jiu Jitsu gym, you know, everybody like always joking around, you know, like some gyms are they're like more serious, but like from what I came from, like people are always like you know have that kind of friendship. And I think that opened me up a little bit more, you know, to like be more social. Where I came from, like in Brazil, like, you know, there's like kind of like different type of things. Like you get there, like you're going to see like say lawyers, you know, and training with this kid that can barely pay his membership and he's there, you know, sometimes he doesn't even pay the membership. He gets like, you know, somebody to like pay for him. And people don't even care about that, you know, they, they're, they're, they're trained together as friends, as teammates. You know, they don't not try to like, you know, I don't want to be near that guy because like, you know, he, he's poor and I'm rich, so I don't want to get near him, like, you know, I don't want to socialize with them. And I think that's one good thing that about any sport, not just jujitsu, you know, like jujitsu, of course, like you have that context, so like, you know, it ends up being like a different environment, like, you know, people are like usually like closer. But uh, I think any sport brings that kind of thing, you know, people don't go by, you know, social like type of like lifestyle, you know, it's not, just, not because you're rich, I'm not going to socialize with you if I'm poor, so it's always like everybody's the same. Jiu-Jitsu, it is good for like to kind of like separate people. You know, people that want actually to they have ego, if they stick around, they become humble. If they feel like they cannot, like you know, become humble, they're gonna leave. Which is good for the gym, no matter what. You know, it's good for the instructor, good for the other students. Because like, if you have somebody that has like ego in the gym, it's never good. You know, those are the guys that are gonna be hurting people. Those are the guys that are gonna be like complaining about something. But uh, Jiu-Jitsu does that to people. You know, it humbles people. Like sometimes, like in a gets the ego actually in a good way. Sometimes, like. Uh, Actually, like this last week, I was training with a few of my purple belts, and you know, like uh, there's like a skill level difference. So sometimes I go like too easy, and you know, I get like a 10 minute round, and you go like two, three submissions, and I was like, man, but if I keep training light with these guys, how are they gonna get better? You know, I cannot be training light, so I decided just to go like full power on them. And in a 10 minute round, it's not just th three submissions anymore; it becomes like six, seven, eight, ten, and they start to get frustrated. And then they become better training partners for me too because like, it hurts their ego. Like nobody wants to get tapped out. You know, nobody wants to get tapped out. Getting tapped out by black belt is fine. But when you get tapped out like, you know, 10 times, like it becomes embarrassing. And then that makes them better because they want to be more aggressive. They want to make the jitsu better so they can start to like, you know, catch up with my game. So I feel like, you know, the whole ego part could go work both ways. You know, it could be like a benefit, could it be bad. And I feel like that that way was a good case. Now it worked like kind of worked their ego, but like to the good way. They they want to become better, so they can start to like you know start to catch up with like the levels over the black belts. My my style of jiu-jitsu has changed like so much over the years. Like uh, I would, I would start like as a blue belt. That's when I started to develop kind of my own game. Uh, as a blue belt, I would be like a. a Guy like just guy guard passer, just like passing the guard, all the same pass to you. I never changed it much, but I, I had it like that pass. It was like I mastered the pass. I could just work on it and pass. As a purple belt, I started to develop my half guard, so I became like guard game guard guy. As a brown belt, I started to play the lahiva, and mostly I was like a point point like grappler, like you know, my first like uh, lower belt, and. Funny enough, like instead of like you know keep that style, like and since like I'm I'm competing, competing against better guys now, once it became a black belt, that's when I started to submit people. So instead, people would think, yeah, maybe like you know the lower levels, he was tapping everybody out, but no, it was the opposite. At lower belts, I was like a point guy. I would say brown belt changed a little bit too. Like I said, like at the Worlds, I had 13 matches and 10 were by submissions, but uh, I think at brown belt, at the end of my brown belt to black belt, that's when it became like a more of a finisher. If you look at my match at ATC, like there's not like a lot of points. I, I never get a lot of points. I'm not that guy who's getting like you no know, sweep back, mount passes. I think I have never scored a guard pass in ATC. 
I've done, I've swapped the people to mount, swapped to take it back. Sometimes I take it back like off the scrambles, but as far as like passing the guard mount, like all those like basic transitions, I don't think it has ever happened in ATC and I've completed it three times. But uh, I'm more of a finisher nowadays. I look for submissions more than anything else. Sometimes like, and I'm still like down points or whatever, and I'm still looking for submissions, which actually end up, ends up like opening up like for me to get points. Sometimes I'm going for a heel hook, the guy gives up the top position, I get, get a sweep. Sometimes I'm going for an omoplata, looking for the finish, the guy rolls and I get a sweep, so like happening against Verdun. So I became more of a finisher, which actually allows me to get points sometimes. Oh, he's looking for it. I've I have competed against some really good like uh, names in, in the sport. You know, I'm not just in jiu-jitsu. Like I went against Chris Weidman uh, in ATC in 2009. I, I beat him by a flying armbar. And the day before, I actually went against uh, Marcel Cruz, Paddy Pano, and I also beat him by armbar, which is like you now two armbars uh, in ATC, which you have, nobody has ever done, and they haven't done since. And now it's been already like two different editions. I had it like ATC 2011. I don't think they had it like any flying armbar. And in 2013, no flying armbar. So like, you know, I still, I'm still the only guy to do like, uh, I'm the last guy to do flying armbars in ATC, and the only one to do like two flying armbars. So I've, I've beat like, uh, Rodrigo Cavaca, who's a Jiu-Jitsu world champion. Robert Drysdale, like I beat him like once in a like, no-gi match. Uh, have wins over Bushesha. Who else? Cyborg twice by submission. Man, there's a few names. Glover Teixeira, like he was my third place match uh, in ATC in 2011. I have wins over Dean Lister. I mean, I have like some guys that I'm probably not even named, Fabrice Verdun. But uh, you know, I've been like some good guys that like mostly like those guys either like they are either ATC champions or world champions in Jiu Jitsu. You know, unfortunately, like I say, unfortunately I wasn't able to do like a lot of Jiu Jitsu with the gear like once I got my black belt. I wish I would have done now it's almost like you know, I could still do it, but like it would be better if I had done when I was 21, 22, 23. And uh but just for the, the fact that I beat those guys, even like these days, you know, it's not like it's not like I beat those guys like five, six years ago. Like it was like you know, one or two years ago. So it's like for me that means a lot. You know, I, I didn't get the titles, but like I proved myself like to be one of the best. Not might not be the best because I didn't get the titles that all these guys got. But I feel like well, if I beat the guys that are considered like the best guys in the world, I have to be up there. You know. my arm but uh, at one point I, saw, I think it was the first couple of seconds really if you count like that's exactly when I positioned myself in the right spot once I turned my shoulder up and I got almost like deep underneath his, his butt that's when I felt like I was comfortable you know no matter what he did like to my arm like turning my twisting my wrist like going for like wrist locks I was safe I was completely safe and uh, I think my rash guard is like white and black so it looks like uh, my arms bending too much but if you look again the video pay attention to the rash guard it's that rash guard design that makes it look like it's bent too bad, but it's not. The, my elbow is actually fully extended, but it's not bending backwards. What's going up, going up, it's my shoulder. You know, it's almost like my, I'm dislocating my shoulder, but not really like with injury, an injury, just kind of like pulling it out. And uh, so the whole pressure was on the shoulder, not much on the elbow. That's why I felt like I was comfortable. If I had to get an injury, I probably would have been on the shoulder, but still, luckily I didn't get anything. It was scary though, man. Like it was such like a scary thing. Just being there, you don't know if the guy's gonna find the right spot. Not just that, my, my, my biggest fear wasn't just the submission itself, it was him giving up the arm by and trying to take them out. Because then he would win by points and you know, the, all the effort to not to tap would just go to trash. So. For me, like, I believe that I'm not a great athlete, you know, it's not about being athletic, it's not about this or that, it's about training. Like, uh, my Jiu-Jitsu game now with Gi 
it's nowhere as good as it was as a, as a, when I was at Brown Belt. Cause like I would have just trained like twice a day every day, and it was like so much better. This time, you know, I would say that now I'd have like a bigger knowledge. I know a lot more stuff. Probably like you know I can see like things happening a lot better than I used to. But I was a better competitor. Like you know, I used to do like a lot more. I would have like had I had a different pace like on the mat training. But I think that all come back like you know with training. So I think that's the biggest thing. That's what makes uh, people a like champion in the sport is the fact that they train more than other people. You know, they train more than average people. So I think anybody can reach that level if they dedicate themselves the same way as the you know the world class athletes. So I think it's all about the dedication. It's not much. It's not much about like talent. If you have the right mindset, that's one thing that nobody can teach anybody. You have to have it. That's the only thing. But everything else, as far as athleticism, you can you can get that from training. Your technique, you can you can get better from training but if you don't have the right mindset you might never reach that level and again that's one thing that you're gonna be teaching people in the gym my first MMA fight was in 2006 um, maybe 2006 five I can't remember but it was like around 2005 2006 and uh, he was told because I was training with the uh, uh, Cesar Grace Academy. And you know, they had like Nick Diaz, Jake Shields, David Terrell. All those guys were grapplers. They were fighting MMA. And that's actually was my better training there. You know, they didn't have much of a Jiu Jitsu guys at, at my level because, like, you know, I was just competing Gi. Uh, I had just I had just won the world championship as a, as a brown belt in Gi. And I was just like a top level in Gi, but I had no experience whatsoever, no Gi. But that was the best training. So I had to start training with the guys to get the best training. And uh, since they were fighting, you know, they started to get motivated about fighting too. They said they said that I could really do really well in MMA, and I kind of got into that hype, you know. So my first fight, my first MMA fight, I did with the three weeks of training for a fight, and that those three weeks were basically jiu-jitsu, <laughs> you know, just with punches, but no like wrestling, no striking. And I would say that my first few MMA fights were that way. Even on the fighter, like my whole experience was jiu-jitsu. That's why, like, you know, I would rush into the clinch. And try to pull guard because I had no wrestling and I knew it. You know, I wasn't risking doing anything else. I wasn't risking trying to like a, a a takedown and burn myself out. So that's why I was pulling guard because like up until that point, I just had no idea like how to go for a takedown. I had no idea how to go for a double leg. And even even nowadays, I'm still getting better at those areas. But back then, like up to the Ultimate Fighter, I was not an MMA fighter. I was a Jiu-Jitsu guy doing MMA. And uh, so I would say that from 2005 or six to the Ultimate Fighter, you know. That's when I started, but I was uh, just being a jiu-jitsu guy doing MMA. And after the, you know, I made the Ultimate Fighter finale, that's when I became an MMA fighter. So there's the two stages, if you can't count, you can count 2006 to 2008 as a try, you know, try out to start. And I would say that I started fighting MMA, I became an MMA fighter in 2008. Uh, as far as becoming an MMA fighter, I was really like, uh, I think a, an example that I could give it's the Meow Brothers. You know, I talked to uh, Jerome like at the ATC and he talked talked about like always doing Jiu Jitsu, not even teaching class because all he wants to do is training, training, training. And I was like that, you know, of course, like once you grow, like, you know, get older, you feel like you have to start to like pay your bills, like, you know, wanna, you want to grow in life. And that changed. And I think that's what made him move into MMA, you know. At first it was money, now I do it for love. So like I would say like, you know, I have two different loves, which is Jiu Jitsu. And MMA, but I, I, I think I pick like MMA right now just for competition. But for fun, Jiu Jitsu is still the best. I don't do I don't, I don't do MMA for fun, like in the gym. In the gym, like I do, I have the fun like in a fight. But being in the gym to train MMA is like stressful, it's, like it's tiring, it hurts your body. But the fun is not in the gym. It's usually the fun is in the fight. While Jiu Jitsu, the fun is the whole time. You know, like when you're training, have fun. When you're competing, you have fun. When you're hanging out with your friends on the night, you having fun. It's a totally different thing. So I picked it to be a fighter, but. Uh, I think I made a decision only when I decided to like make a living off like you know the sport, but it wasn't something that I started like you know thinking like right away. Just now, just like my first day, like yeah, one of the days I want to be a competitor and I'm gonna stick with this for the rest of my life. Thank you.
rough on your body, man. Like jujitsu can be rough on your body too, but it's like it's almost like good. And I'll just feel like, man, I had a good round today. I'm like really tired, like I'm sore. And then maybe it's almost like, man, I'm hurt. It's just like that's all you think you're hurt. There's no such a thing as have fun. Like even if you're getting the best of like the rounds, like in MMA uh, sparring, you still feel like, man, it was stressful today. I need a rest. I never had that thought like in jujitsu. Like if I get tired, I almost like I, I want to get back better like the next break so I don't get tired. But there's always like you know that kind of mentality that you want to do it more and more and more. And MMA do have that too, but like I said, training is not as fun as fighting. I think I've been successful in MMA not for having a great record, but just for the fact that you have like you know thousands of different promotions in the world. You have like thousands of like fighters in the world. They all are trying to get in the UFC. I'm not just got once, but I got twice. And I was uh, able to fight with, like one top ten fighter once. And if I had beaten that guy, I would be like a top ten myself. So I did have a successful career, like unfortunately then I ended up getting like more losses than was in the UFC, which it was more than fair for them to cut me. As far as mentality, man, it's it's so weird. In jiu-jitsu, like you know, you really respect it for like, you know, the guy could be let's say let's say if I fought like if I had gone against the Bushesha three times, the guy had beat me three times, I would should not hate the guy, I would should not talk shit about him. While like in MMA, it's almost like you have to, you know, if you want to promote a fight, if you want to promote like a rivalry, you have to be that, you know, they have to have a good guy and a bad guy and sometimes you have to choose the role of be like a bad guy and unfortunately or maybe a good thing like you know there is more spots in the spot in the sport to be a bad guy and that's pretty much the, the role it shows like you know once I got back to the UFC I was like you know there's too many good guys either people choose to be the good guy or the guys that don't talk about anything they don't want to be good or bad guys the guys that don't want to be good or bad guys the guys just want to be neutral nobody know, knows like who they are you know there was like UFC they probably have like 400 like UFC fighters and if you start to like try to name people you might be able to name maybe like 30 40 60 guys most out of 400 just because like you know the other guys they don't stand out either they don't stand out as fighters or they don't stand out as characters you know and that's important like Jiu Jitsu it is a sport you know it's about like lifestyle it's about be like you know discipline it's about like all those like good things and it made to support entertainment so like talking sometimes good or bad has to happen you know it's not just about being quiet and do your job just to go there and fight some some guys like I say can stand out just by fighting some guys they have to fight and they have to talk and I pretty much what I chose to do you know like uh, I'm not the guy that some people think I am but uh, I chose to talk just so I could get like first of more money because that's that's a business and I could get like more exposure so you know people if, if it happened like what happened like of me getting cut in UFC again I would still have a chance to get it back because like you know I'm a guy who, who became marketable for the things I said also for the, for the fact that I fought you know fairly well I believe that success it's almost like you wanted something you achieved that thing you know like and, and that has nothing to do with money like to give an a best example it's what you what you're talking about jiu-jitsu these guys are they can make money off of of course promoting themselves but they go down to get a gold medal at the world and that's all they get they're not getting any money but you know I guarantee that the world medal means more than anything else people could have come for, to those guys and say okay you don't have this title this week they have the world I'll give you like 50 like 20 grand don't compete at the world I'll give you 20 grand just for you to come to a seminar nobody's gonna do the seminar especially guys that have like a great chance of being world champions like they're gonna choose to do the world championships first off they can turn the world championship cha world championships into like 20 grand easily and that's what they love to do and if they win that that's gonna mean like success money is like it's not the same thing so I believe that you know every time they achieve a goal like you've been successful and I feel like you know I'm really successful because a bunch of my goals were easy to achieve and of course I could have just repeat the, the goals and I could have just go there and win ATC like twice would it make it more successful yeah but I feel that I already achieved what I wanted so I am successful so you know like the world's I have not won the worlds with Gi, but I won the no Gi. I, I feel like I'm successful in the area too. So, you know, everything that you do in life, that you feel like you don't have to do it anymore. If you do it, it's because you want to do it, but not because you, you need to do it. I think you, you, that means that you're successful.